But, but Norma Chester Johnson's mother suspects that Willis played an active role in her son's death. My thoughts are that he concocted something and gave it to all three men. He drugged them, dragged them outside, and waited two days to call police. Initially, he was by himself. Now there's a fifth magical person who was at the house. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's call out some of the inconsistencies. Hey, what's up, it's Mel. Welcome back to the channel, and thank you for stopping by. We have another update with regards to the Kansas City men in Missouri that were found frozen to death outside of their friend's house. Now, probably not shocking, especially with everything that we've covered today. Family of Kansas City chiefs found dead outside Powell's house thinks he was a drug. Now, if you didn't see the live stream we did today, I'll put the links down below, as well as a different story where this couple was found frozen to death. Interesting story, though. It seems like this couple voluntarily took substances. Crazy turn of events with 911 calls. Definitely check it out if you haven't. Now, family and friends of the three Kansas City Chiefs fans found dead in the snow two days after a game day gathering doubt police assertions that no foul play is suspected with one family retaining an attorney to compel a more thorough investigation, which I think is a good idea. The bodies of Ricky, Clayton, and David were discovered by the Kansas City Police Department on January 9th after one man's fiance told them that she hadn't heard from her partner in two days. Kansas City Police Department told Fox that they are still waiting for the results of the men's post-autopsy toxicology reports. The last contact the men made with their loved ones was on January 7th when they joined a group at the Northwest 83rd Terrace home for their friend, of their friend Jordan Willis to watch the Kansas City Chiefs play the Los Angeles Chargers. It goes on to say, according to the victim's family, Willis met officers at the door in his boxers with an empty wine glass in the hand. His attorney, John Persino, told Fox it contained water. <laughs> okay, all right. And had been refilled after holding wine the night before. Amazing, the guy got everything, everything. He has everything covered, this attorney. Persino said his client allowed police to search his home without a warrant or an attorney present. Ross Nigro, an attorney representing Johnson's family, said police carried out a second, more thorough investigation two days later. The number one thing that people need to remember from our point of view is that these were his three buddies. If they were in danger, he would have helped them. If he knew they were out there, he would have called police himself. Anything beyond that is pure speculation, and that's from Jordan Willis's attorney, John Persino. In the 48 hours prior, the family said Willis had ignored repeated emails, Facebook messages, texts, phone calls, and knocks at the door. Willis's attorney said he went to sleep on the night of January 7th with Johnson, McKinney, Harrington, and a fourth man still awake inside. We talk about this today, the fourth man. Willis has since moved out of his rental home in fear of retaliation after a flurry of media attention about his friend's deaths, according to Persino. He has also taken a leave of absence from his job as a data scientist at IAVI, a nonprofit that develops vaccines for infectious diseases. There's no allegation of any animosity between Jordan and his three friends, Persino told Fox News. People want to speculate, but it's not like anyone ever called the police saying we're afraid of this guy, Jordan. Persino said two of the three men had been friends with Willis since high school, and the third was a close friend for about four years. They went to watch the Chiefs game together. Jordan had bought four tickets to the Chiefs game for the following Sunday so they could go together. Persino said, I understand that people are hurting, but that's no excuse to throw baseless accusations at Jordan. But, but Norma Chester Johnson's mother suspects that Willis played an active role in her son's death. Seriously, these were responsible men. How do they get in a backyard and freeze to death? All three of them, she told Fox News Digital. Something that comes to mind. This guy wants to brag about how smart he is. He's a scientist. My thoughts are that he concocted something and gave it to all three men. I know I'm just thinking, but how could this have happened? Johnson, a father of three, never showed up for work at his father's construction company that Monday. At the time, Ricky Johnson Sr. told Fox News his family worked to find the address where his son watched the game. Meanwhile, Johnson's family and friends on social media said one of the men's fiancés had broken into Willis's house after repeated attempts to reach him and answered knocks at his door. Meanwhile, Johnson's family and friends on social media said one of the men's fiancés had broken into Willis's house 
after repeated attempts to reach him and answered knocks at his door. There she found one of the men's bodies and called police. Bro, how crazy is that? Johnson's father said a police presence had already amassed when he and family members pulled up to Willis's house on January 9th. They told us to wait for four hours and they would tell us what they found. Johnson Sr. said on Tuesday, we waited all night and they never called. We called them the next day and they still wouldn't give us any information. So I called an attorney. Don't blame me. Good job. He may have done some drug stuff in the past, but I do not believe all three of them did drugs and fell over dead in the backyard. Johnson Sr. said of his son. Interesting. Interesting. And this just makes me flash back to the story of this couple that we covered today. I'm not going to say during a game he didn't want some drinks, but he wasn't irresponsible that he was going outside and to freeze to death. You're talking about three grown men. If he was out there just freezing, like they said, he could have kicked out a window to get in the house. The father continued. Johnson Sr. also said his son's coat was inside the house and that he would have never gone outside without a coat. Again, guys, again, if you were with me today and we watched that story that we covered, that that couple had left their clothes, their winter clothes, uh, they left it in the car, had left their car, door open, car running, half tank of gas and went out into the freezing temps and wilderness. I'm not saying that's what happened here. I'm just saying it's interesting what people could do under substances. And so he goes on to say, I believe he drugged them, dragged them outside and waited two days to call police. That's ridiculous. Persino said about the accusations that Willis drugged the men. He's a scientist and somehow he's to blame. That's an opinion, not based fact. The bereaved father said he was one of several concerned friends and relatives who called Willis on the men's behalf before he arrived at the house. But Willis attorney denied that claim in an interview with Fox News Digital. The thing that strikes me that's strange about that is that none of those people called him on his cell phone, Persino said. One of them, I believe it was the fiance, did send him a message on Facebook Messenger, but he didn't receive it until after police had. Persino said his client did not hear knocks at his door before police arrived because he was sleeping with noise canceling headphones and a loud fan. Willis didn't hear when the concerned woman broke into the house. The, bro, the thing that strikes me that's strange about that is that none of those people called him on his cell phone. So I guess there there's conflicting reports. Friends of the three men and Johnson Senior's attorney Nigro wonder how Willis could have avoided going outside for two days. Persino tripper that to, hey, he worked from home. Even though Persino initially said he was home sporadically, Jordan, now he's changed that story to he works from home and he was home the entire time. Nigro said three other guests were at Willis's house on the night of the Chiefs game. They said their host two dogs were present. If you have a dog and there's three deceased people at the house, they would alert you to the bodies, Nigro said. Nigro also said the Persino's retelling of events to the press has changed over the course of several interviews, according to Fox 4 Kansas City. Willis's attorney said there was a fifth person in the house when the homeowner went to sleep that night. Initially, he was by himself. Now there's a fifth magical person who was at the house. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's call out some of the inconsistencies. The fact that the story has changed significantly makes it seem unbelievable and not trustworthy whatsoever. In addition, Mr. Willis leaving the residence and hiring a criminal defense. Those are all signs of someone hiding something, which I don't think it was a bad idea for him to get a, an attorney. But Willis has not been charged of any crime or accused of any wrongdoing. First and foremost, this case is 100% not being investigated as a homicide. Captain Jake said that, and we talked about that earlier today. There have not been any arrests or charges, and no one is in custody. There's no specific threats or concerns to the surrounding community. Man, it's late. It's late. I got to get this video out, but the family's not buying the story. There have been changes of story through the attorney from Jordan, and the family attorney is calling it out. And something that somebody commented earlier was like, Okay, this guy has these noise canceling headphones, so he doesn't hear people banging on his door, breaking into the house, which I, is possible. But somehow, when the cops show up magically, now he has his hearing restored. Not only that, somebody had mentioned, okay, it's freaking cold, and this guy has a fan blasting on him. Why? That's part of the thing. And then now they're saying the what glass of wine was just water in a glass of wine. I don't know, man. You guys comment down below. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Turn on bell notifications. Take care. Love you. Peace. Let me know your thoughts, man. Let me know your thoughts. There's so much to...